art style and the tech and weaponry of Dark Void is pretty unique. It's got kind of this ragtag, throw it together thing with uh, Tesla technology. We were kind of calling it Tesla punk for a little bit is what we were saying. Just picture Tesla with a mohawk and you know what our game is. We've got sort of two different factions in this world. One of them is human-based, then there's this super advanced civilization. So we've, we've got uh, weapons and technology that's just really based in 19, late 1930s technology versus this super advanced stuff. What's fun in the game is, you know, as Will, you get to pick up all this cool Tesla stuff, which is grungy, clunky, chunky, but awesome, and then also have access to this like clean, alien stuff. Tesla's able to uh, take a lot of this technology and uh, expand upon it, use his own ingenuity to really, you know, make it usable for humans. The jetpack is pretty much uh, Tesla's, it's, it's the pinnacle of his creation since his time in the void. It starts out with more of a hover pack and then it evolves into a rocket pack. And it's so experimental that the first time you use it, everybody tries to discourage you from using it. Are you crazy? You'll kill yourself. I think the jetpack really does tie the look of both the, the futuristic uh, sci-fi watcher stuff we've got going on and that retro Tesla stuff because you've got the cool sleek forms and uh, this really you know, future thing going on and then we've got big tubes and guns kind of just bolted onto the side of it and stuff. He can even hover and fire his own weapons in his hands so the combination of those things pull him together into this sort of one-man army in the sky. I think it's the perfect fusion and, and probably one of the most iconic uh, you know, pieces of tech that you see in the game. Will's able to carry two weapons at a time so if certain weapon combos open up certain fun uh, events. So for example, uh, we'll say Will is undercover, under fire by about four guys. Laying down a watcher grenade, which is this expanding sphere of death, would pretty much pin down two or three of those guys with a quick hover pack jump to circumvent from the flank and then take out the rest. So what could have been three minutes of fighting, if you're quick, you could make a 15 second encounter and be moving on. Finding these like fun combos, I think it's going to be pretty fun for people. My favorite weapon is the disintegrator gun. Shoot once keep moving. It's a, it's a very powerful gun. It'll take out some enemies with one shot. I, li I like the Magnetar a lot. It's kind of got this anti-gravity thing going on, so it's like bubble bobble but different, where you can kind of zap the guys and they'll float up in the air and they're there kind of flailing around and I thought I think that stuff's pretty fun. So every weapon has two levels of upgrade after you uh, obtain it. So one example, the, the Liberator. It's upgrade path. You get it, it's straight SMG shooting bullets. I think the next upgrade is like, you know, it's an increase on clip size and a bit of accuracy, which is like, oh ho hum. The ultimate upgrade is explosive rounds. And that's like, okay, now this guy's really exciting. So my rat -a tat tat now becomes rat -a boom boom. There's a, a ton of design challenges when you're trying to create a new sci fi shooter. We looked back at a lot of those old uh, pulp serials and then some of the new modern things like Battlestar Galactica. And of course, you know, we got Bear McCreary doing the music, so that helps. And then um, we just kind of fused it and merged it together to make uh, something that we think is a little bit different but still hits that that kind of classic cool sci-fi feel.